uh, yeah. So this is a new situation for me. Like uh, I'm relaunching uh, the one on one podcast, my interview podcast. No, I'm the I'm the season premiere. Yeah, man. Basically, so, I I do appreciate it, man. Uh, we the first time we met though, I don't know if we ever discussed this because this was like a long time ago. This was almost two years ago. At actually at the Blind Tiger, right? You were in town not this last time, but the time before mm-hmm. when you were at the LOL, mm-hmm. right? Uh, you were at the LOL, sold out crowds, multiple shows, packed out rooms. Just to go bomb at the Blind Tiger. No, dude, <laughs> no, and that's that's the thing. So I went to, I went to go check out your show at LOL yeah. before I went to the Blind Tiger, and. Uh, I'm there just chilling, and then I see you and Javi Luna yeah. pull up. Uh-huh. And I was like, dude, this guy just got off of doing two shows, two back-to-back shows, and then he's going to come and do the Tiger you're for like, free? He looks like he's under the influence. Nah, There's... and then you're just there, like, and the, the room, maybe maybe 20 people. Uh-huh. Maybe 20 people yeah, with that at the midnight show and whatever. You go up there, you do your thing, and I was like, man, this guy... These guys just like working out. He's just working stuff out, you know. After doing a, like two sold out shows, yeah, it's a different muscle. <laughs> and then working out a different muscle. Yeah, and then like afterwards, we go outside, and you're like, "Hey, man, come with me." Hey, man, you wanna you wanna talk jokes? Hey, man, you wanna smoke some weed? And, and then like you're giving me tags on jokes. I was like, "Oh, man, you were watching." So I say all that because like. I figured that you were already at like this, like this, this status, you know. To you, work, to, yeah, to where I don't need new friends, bro. Not new friends, okay, but okay. like to go, like actually work out, like <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. to go work out after doing two two hour oh, shows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I, no, trust me, I was like, uh, do I? Should I? Like, I could just go chill. You could have, and you but, should. You know, Javi. Uh, you know, iron sharpens iron. And, yes. Um, and you know, I saw you know Javi getting in the. The, the reps and I'm always curious about different scenes and yeah. different rooms you know I'm up for the challenge sometimes but it shows that you actually like care about the stuff because like you came, you came in you were doing the, the rap thing you were yeah. a DJ radio DJ right in, yeah, in college uh-huh. got into the rap game started doing the skits went viral started doing stand up but like you, you don't you don't chill like you ah, still bro. like put the hustle in bro. there bro before I, I was even able to hit the road to leave Houston to do the three hour drive to get here on time, my wife is like, Whoa, 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 hey, whoa, whoa, whoa where are you going? Yeah. And I'm just like, uh, I got, I'm doing a bunch of podcasts because I'm doing a bunch of shows this weekend. Yeah. Remember? Oh, can you help me with this thing? Ship station won't let me log in. Something about the browser. Can you update the operating system? So it's kind of like, ah. And then tomorrow's her birthday. Oh. As, as we're recording this, tomorrow's her birthday. So I'm working while my, it's my, my wife's birthday back yeah. home. So I'm going to do my best. She's like, are you going to drive in? I'm like, sweetheart, I just got here. I'm not going to do a big old U-turn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's a, that's, I'm here now. That's three hours. That's a three-hour drive. I mean, like, with not, traffic, not, not to mention, like, I got a full schedule, and my boy Juan keeps adding stuff. Yeah. So every time I look, every time I blink, it's like, hey, man, you got time to uh, squeeze. I know you want to go to jujitsu class, bro, but look. Yeah. This your career we talking about, bro. <laughs> yeah, it puts that fear in you. Like, no, nah, I'm gonna squeeze it. We'll get it all in. That's cool. But yeah, yeah, man. Uh, so thank you for being here. You got Chingo Bling in the house. Let me do uh, the read off. Well, he's currently in San Antonio doing the uh, last leg of the tour. Yeah, so LOL. He'll be at LOL October 10th to the 13th. This uh, weekend. This weekend. Come on out. Uh, get your tickets. We're gonna put this out before the show. So get thank your you. tickets. Do not miss out. It's a great show. And you got Javi Luna coming to oh, town. Yeah, we too. got Javi Luna. Uh, we actually have a lot of guests and surprises. Oh, okay. Uh, my buddy Gabe, who does uh, country music, he's going to do like an acoustic set at the end. With nice. Me. At the end, there were guest spots. Tio Juventino, uh, my homegirl Sandra huh? from Arizona is in town. It's, it's going to be crazy. Cool, man. And, and then <laughs> after that, you got Corpus Christi, November 8th through 9th. You're doing Friendsgiving in Pasadena, November 16th. And then Chingo Bells. Is that, a, is that an annual thing, Chingo Bells? It's about to be annual. Annual thing. Uh, <laughs> that's going to be in Arlington, December 27th and the 29th. Go to chingobling.com slash live for all the tickets and all the information on that. That'll be lit. Hustle, dude. You're, you're, you're a hustler. And that's like, because you think, you know, when you start out, you got you got to be on the social medias. You got to like do the the skits. You're always creating characters and all that stuff. Like you, do, you don't ease up. Bro, the, the way my bills are set up. You know, it's set up you have to, no where, to where you got to, <laughs> like, I remember a long time ago when I started here in San Antonio, when I was a college radio DJ, college radio DJ, I remember um, one of the, like, 
rap, like hip hop night spots. It was these two promoters. And I'm, I'm going to get to the point because I know you're in the middle of reading my tour dates. Oh, no, no, but, no. But, but yeah, so I just remember like we were like broke college students, but we remember seeing these um these two promoter dudes who were probably like a year or two older than us. I don't know if they were like military, but... But I remember uh, one of them getting like a, a Lexus, mm. and he was just like, "Yeah, you know what I'm saying, keep me focused and, and motivated." But I got daughters, you know what I mean? They got activities, you yeah. know what I mean? But no, nah, we we like to work, um, we like to stay busy. But the thing people don't realize, and not to get too inside baseball, but like telling jokes is like a small percentage. Like being on stage is a tiny percentage, and yeah. this might be some game. For any uh, creative, up and coming creative person, mm -hmm. you know, you, you, everybody got to have. I mean, it seems like, right? Not every, you know, not necessarily everybody needs a podcast, nothing like that. Yeah. Because you know, that's a real commitment. But, um, but like in terms of like social media, you know, the, the bell bonds people, the tax people, the, the barbacoa spot, like restaurants, in order to survive, they got to have that good. Uh, they got to engage with you so that they can have the eyeballs and they can sell the tacos yeah. and the tortas, whatever. But, but yeah, man, um, it, it's a cool, it's, it's been a cool ride, um, cool journey. Definitely respect the craft. So, yeah. so it was cool seeing y'all in the Blind Tiger and seeing y'all work out and the, yeah. the camaraderie and everything. And that, that's the thing because, like, it, it does show that you re respect the craft because like, there are people that get to a certain level or uh, that just have the audience from the viral videos you know and then they start doing they start doing comedy shows but they don't hit up open mics to like work stuff out i've heard people say like well i have people pay to come see me why would i go do it for free which i guess uh, wow i could agree i mean i see their point i see their side of it so when i saw you because i i saw the show the solid show and then i saw you come to the tiger i was like damn dude this guy is just working on new and you did you worked out some new stuff that you didn't do in the hour that i saw and you're doing just new stuff i was like this guy is just like constantly working like this guy actually cares about the craft so my respect for you not only as a hustler and as like the person who you know could do the social media could do you know the, the music and the promotions and all that stuff hey, to actually to, take the time to, to to the he, I, look, I'm gonna say how he really meant to say it. It's a lot of TikTok motherfuckers out there, <laughs> dog. <laughs> I'm gonna say, but let me translate. Say, man, it's a whole lot of little TikTokers out there, it, and, they, and, they, and, they, and they hogging up the lane. They, they switching do. lanes. They over here taking up weekends, calendar dates. Oh, yeah. Could have went to a comedian, but but to the people, I've never heard that that rebuttal of like, why would I go practice if. Why people pay me to for free. People pay, pay, to, pay see me. to see me. Uh, but here's the thing, though: you gotta have an act. Yes, you gotta have an act because, especially in this economy, when people coughing up ticket money and 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 t-shirt money and babysitter money and gas money and the light bills yeah. due and the internet's due and the kids gotta make stay, it worth it. And the kids' tuition came out. Yeah, like mm -hmm. you you got to have an act it's yeah. it's like they're not going to you're not going to get repeat business you're going to ruin your reputation get a bad name yeah. the clubs may or may not want you back they might squeeze the last bit of juice out of you like this dude's good for about 2 3 years mm -hmm. or whatever 5 6 7 years and he's not going to be able to um you know make the cut yeah I mean, and that's the thing, too. And, and is that their game plan are they just here for a couple years or they're here for the long haul and like I I don't want to say that I hate on the TikTokers. I, I get it. I mean, they sell tickets. It's good for the clubs. Yeah, clubs need to make money any way, any way they can. The wait staff. Yeah. Uh, but it's just like there's a, there's a craft to it, and then there's people just out there doing the uh, the appearances. There's yeah, cell yeah, yeah, phone yeah, celebrities yeah. to the whole, to a certain extent. Absolutely right. And, and, uh, and it's good that you distinguish, in my opinion, it's good that you distinguish, you know, uh, it's two different products. Mm -hmm. It's one room, one venue, mm -hmm. but it's, Two different things yeah. and you know unfortunately the way it could water down the game is someone who's never attended a a comedy club or seen a stand-up comedy show they're like well i saw such and such and i mean there's they're all right i didn't yeah. really have that much fun there it was kind of unorganized and crazy and no one knew what was going on yeah i couldn't get my picture and like whatever whatever uh, or we were done after 10 15 minutes after we saw the person so yeah i think it's wise to from you as a as a comedian because some comedians they get so uh like bitter about it that they don't understand the economics of it you at least saw hey man these comedy clubs they got a big rent to pay mm -hmm. and labor expenses and food uh f 
uh, if food goes bad, you know, that mayonnaise ain't good no more, you got to throw it out. Mm -hmm. Okay, shit, we out of mayonnaise now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Motherfucker, how many tickets you going to sell so we could buy more mayonnaise? And yeah. matter of fact, we out of relish. Mm -hmm. So how about I bring this little TikToker, and we can go ahead and stock up mm -hmm. on everything we've been needing because we still got Chingo coming and all these people coming and, and we got rent and yeah. these big shopping centers. Yeah. So, I mean, when, when you when you think about it, I mean, you have to think about the business of it. I know, like, the, I, I don't really like the whole business of it, but you have to, like, take the good to, with the dog. bad. You, you got to understand where people come from, you know, like, but, like, I, like, I love I love the hustle. I love doing the open mics. I love, like, going to small, small rooms or, you know, just trying stuff out. I like challenging myself to uh you know I, can i make these strangers like me mm -hmm. you know they're not my friends they don't know anything you know so when i see people actually do that like you did when you came down to the tiger and then what really impressed me too was like you were like oh you want to talk your jokes i saw your set let's talk about it. and i was like dude like yeah dude, let's let's do this to show that like you actually like uh, really cared about it so uh when juan reached out and said like that you want to do some podcasts i was like yes dude let's I've been wanting to sit down with you oh, and yeah, just, dude, just chop chat it up, it up man. Mm -hmm. like talk, chop it up. Uh, so yeah, man. But you, you just stay busy, and like you're, you're also doing. I didn't mention this, but you're also doing like a jujitsu uh, cruise or something, or what? what oh, okay. In Cancun, um, what's, yeah, what's yeah, that yeah. Thing? So basically, um, Eddie Bravo. Are you familiar with Eddie Bravo? Yeah. Okay, so he's got Tenth Planet Jujitsu, but he also has like, like tournaments. If I to try to layman's terms like EBI Eddie Bravo Invitational, so there's like different rules and uh, combat jujitsu where you can hit motherfuckers open hand while you trying to grapple with them. Uh, they got Medusa, which is like all the all female league. Yeah. So it's like, so it's like a resort all inclusive. Um, like people who get the tickets. So you can attend an instructional like a seminar. It's okay. almost like for a comedian being on a cruise ship and being like, yo. Uh, Bill Burr himself is gonna sit down for like uh, two hours with us and go over Do stuff. Do a master class? And yeah, a master class. Yeah, so literally you're with Jean Jacques Machado, Eddie Bravo himself, uh, me. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a bluebell. I, I don't know too much. But, uh, but anyway, yeah, it's a cool week. And I'm doing comedy at night. That's where the comedy comes in. Okay. So Sam Tripoli, Eddie Bravo, myself are going to be talking shit at night. So there's just a lot of options. Yeah, so that's cool. I never, I've never done anything like that. Okay. So I'm very blessed to even be a part of it, to like even have access to uh, people with that much information because... Um, you know that's one that's like my hobby you know what i mean that's like my love you know how some people like golf and shit like that yeah for me right now it's jujitsu and uh besides comedy but uh it's cool because um i i apply a lot of the stuff that that's in the jujitsu le um lessons mm -hmm. and find ways to uh, for example in jujitsu a lot of times they say you know your game like what kind of game do you play type of thing right um, and the way I look at it is like for a stand-up comedian, it's like, okay, this dude has uh, actual material, but his crowd work is amazing. He's going to do some callbacks. He'll, do, he'll throw some storytelling at the end. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's actually substance and material. You walk away knowing something about him, and, and it's 20% it's of it's kind of fresh and improvised, made mm -hmm. up and brought out and, you know, put tied together. So that's his game, mm -hmm. and that's a powerful game, what I just described, right? Yeah, for, for sure. Comedian. Like, yeah. Um, to be moving some, up through all those pieces just like so fluidly yeah know? or somebody else might be just bro his main game bro he's just gonna kill you with his writing or mm -hmm. another guy's like he's just gonna murder you he's gonna destroy the room with crowd work mm -hmm. so it's all different uh skill sets you okay. know but anyway um how long have you been doing the jujitsu thing i i want to i want to look up like i'll i'll ask the uh the coach um like what date i signed up this time because i had already started and like quit okay yeah and you just flirt with it you leave you signed up but you're not really going yeah making excuses ah, it's too far traffic and and then we moved uh like n close closer to that to the gym right mm -hmm. and uh i was like all right this is it like i'm glad we're moving right here in the same little area it's not that far yeah traffic and all that stuff's not gonna be as big of an issue so um so anyway it's been about two it might be like two and a half years. Two and a half years. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do you see that it, you because you did mention how it kind of like it coincides with comedy, but have you see how it uh, 
has affected your comedy as far as like your performance or writing or even like how you think about comedy yeah. or approach comedy rather? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, just to give you some examples of, of one way you could see a parallel, right, um, would be possibly like, you know, strategy, like a setting a trap. You know, you're like it, when it comes to stand up, it might be like, oh, okay, you got them clapping because they're letting their guard down because you're announcing a thing. Oh, I just lost 20 pounds or whatever, whatever, right? Somebody could say, and they're letting their guard down. And they're and now, boom, you can hit them with a punchline. You know, so yeah. it's like setting traps or even just, uh, or you might be bombing, and you might be familiar with like. Okay, let's try to find the positive. Like, let's. Uh, this is a, a bad gig or yeah. something, but like, we might have to just have grit and just hang in there, survive, or you know what? Use this as an opportunity to work on a different thing. Mm -hmm. or, I don't know. No, nah, I mean that, that, that makes a lot <laughs> of sense. You're just making shit up. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, like, because I've heard like the like a connection with like boxing, performing in boxing, especially when you're like not doing well, or you have to dig yourself out of a hole, or you gotta like, mm -hmm. you know, you're dealing with hecklers or people not paying attention and all that stuff, or people just not giving you what you want. So you gotta you gotta adjust it up. Because I've seen people, especially like in, in like newbies, that just like once they're on the track, that's it. They're they're going the track. Till till they're done, you know. Oh, like, like they they're, they're they don't just, deviate from the they script. They don't deviate yeah. from the script, you know. Like this yeah. is what they practice. This is what they. And when I started, I've been doing it almost seven years. But when I first started, I had a script, I had bullet points, and I, this is where I start. This is where I stop. And yeah. and I, and from a show, from an audience perspective, like you're just like, dude, you're just being a robot up there. You're just reciting yeah, yeah. your stuff. You're not yeah, really yeah, performing. Yeah. Yeah. And so there's a big difference between that. Uh, so I've heard like the connection, like you gotta you gotta move, you gotta adjust, oh, yeah, boxing, ad ad yeah. uh, adapt, adjust, yeah. and all that stuff. So I wonder like the jujitsu, yeah. how jujitsu would be like kind of the same thing because it's all it's all about planning and strategy, yeah. and then reflex. Yeah, the reflex, and then it. boxing too is I think a perfect analogy because there's rhythm, there's a setup punch mm -hmm. <laughs> combinations. Yeah, you know. Um, and like you said, reacting and having reflexes, like somebody, how do you counter? A heckler yells out a thing. Mm -hmm. Are you being present? Are you listening? Yeah. Are you going to catch it and boom? You got to catch it. You got to yeah. respond to it like quick. You got you to be quick with it. So that's what, when like, I don't know if you, if you if you drink or smoke or whatever, but like, I don't like when I see people like that are go on stage after smoking or go on stage after drinking, I was like, dude, you got to. You gotta be quick. Like, how do you, yeah, yeah, yeah. how are you gonna play with them Maybe if they half a second off, <laughs> half a second off, yeah. a pause, a stutter, like anything. Like, I've had like uh, just moments where like I, I just can't find the rhythm, and I'm just like, and that's sober. I can't imagine doing yeah. it, you know, because I, I like to drink, but I don't drink on stage. Yeah. Or if I do, I have like a show beer, so people think I've been partying with them all night, but yeah, yeah, really yeah, not, because yeah. I like to. I, it's my responsibility to like stay. On, on my game. You got to be on point, period, bro, because for many reasons, I mean, I mean, alcohol, that's a tricky thing because there's that fine line between timing your dosage perfectly of like, you know, I only sipped one shot of tequila and yeah. it was fit, you know, exactly 15 minutes before I went up, you know, it's like yeah. towards the middle, I was, you know, oh, dude, I fucking freestyled bad. Same thing with weed, right? It's yeah. like, dude, like I was on cloud nine and it, I just improvised and, and I caught a groove and yeah. all four cylinders. But then there's other times, right? Where, I mean, even before I move on to that part, like you got to be on point, period, because you, you don't want your decision making to be off. This is aside from performance. Something pops off. You don't want to be slightly dizzy mm -hmm. uh like for example in uh like in over there at the gym and jujitsu and stuff sometimes for the warm-up don't make you do like roly-poly i don't know what the what the actual word but you're doing front rows mm -hmm. all the way down all the way back usually a lot of times like four times all the way down do you by the time you do one you're holding the wall and and I, when i first started there i asked the, the teacher i was like i was like hey so how do I do this to where like I'm not all dizzy? Yeah. And he's like, no, we're doing it in case you get a uh, sucker punch and you're dizzy. So now you kind of know what that feels like. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so with alcohol and weed or edibles, sometimes depending, you know, if you overdo it, 
You got a little bit of dizziness. Yeah, man. Like, I, there's been times where, like, uh, when I'm, I get drunk at a party or something, or back before when I, when I partied or whatever, yeah. and I thought, I oh, mean, I'm the funniest guy here. Yeah, yeah. I'm so hilarious. And then the next day, I like, have all these people to apologize to because I wasn't that funny. Oh, I was just, yeah. like, rude. Loud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was annoying. Like, I was lit. Yeah, dude. I thought I was. I thought we were having a good time, and like, apparently yeah. I was the only one having a good time because I was so out of it. Uh but yeah, that's why like when I see people, especially like open mics, when they go on stage like uh, after a couple of drinks, and they're just like, they're just not using their time wisely. Yeah. I was like, man, like you took my spot. I'm waiting because you're up there doing that. But also, maybe that's just their social thing. Maybe they're just there to have a good time and hang out. And- yeah, I think. I mean, I think in general, bro. Honestly, um, it's a nerve wracking thing mm-hmm. for most people. Mm-hmm. I mean, not. I mean, there's obviously a percentage of comedians. That are like, dude, I don't, I don't get nervous at all. Yeah, you know? and I'm just super confident at all times, brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but for the most part, it's one of those things, man, where you're like, might be insecure about how you, the crowd, or how you're gonna go up, or uh, the the turnout, or certain variables, like, dude, that feedback on that mic, or yeah. that drunk table on the right side, or why is the left side not paying attention? Like, dude, the lady on the back won't shut up with her phone, and you're, you got so much going on, so people tend to resort like we do we're mm-hmm. humans in in a modern day era, modern day era where we self-medicate and we you know mm-hmm. we uh just some you know damn traffic was bad let me hit the yeah. let me hit the vape anybody got a vape you know yeah yeah, yeah. something to or, break yeah. the edge off or you know take the edge off uh got some shit on your mind yeah man you know what I mean, man go man you know what i wasn't gonna drink man oh like for example i did a. I did these these two shows down in the valley where it was like comedy followed by music. Okay. So it was like a hybrid type of show, right? And uh, uh one of the at one of the clubs, it was my boy's birthday, and um, the promoter people, whatever, they're just like, "Hey man, what kind of tequila y'all want?" Like throughout the day, and we're like at a radio station, and man. They replied to the text. So now it's Casa, two bottles, Casamigos, yeah. in the bag with the little spout, with cups and a thing of ice and really nothing else to mix it with. I didn't really see. I, don't, I can't remember that part. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but but it, it was no longer like, hey, does anybody want anything? Yeah, let me get one shot on ice. Just I'll just sip it throughout the night. It turned into like, you're now the bar- bartender. You're pouring. <laughs> you're, you're like, my shit watered down. Man, my ice melted. You put some more ice. Damn. Man, put a little bit of tequila on top. Yeah. And next thing you know, you you lost track. Of yeah. How many have I had? One, what's in ten. There? <laughs> like, yeah, dude. I've I've seen people that like get a whole bottle. Alex Ramundo did a show for Alex Ramundo. He has that uh, number one tequila. He'll oh, yeah. go up there, he'll take a whole bottle, just swig it all night, and still stay. In, well, because he's a professional, he's been doing yeah. it for a while. But I'm just like, like I get like nervous for him when I was I see him up there. I was like, oh, is he gonna stay in there? He's fine. Is he shooting it or sipping it? Sipping. Oh, okay, okay. Sipping, yeah. sipping out of the bottle yeah. and stuff. But it's still like, like every other, every punchline, when, when they're giving him a laugh break, he's like, all right, this time to take a drink. Or if something doesn't land, he's like, oh, I'm going to drink that one off and stuff. And like, just oh, so wild. It's fun. Yeah. It is a fun thing. Like, people get all, like, start cheering when he takes a swig. Like, yeah. yeah. But I'm just like, damn, like, what if he, yeah, like, what if yeah. he goes too far? Nah, what if he takes too you, much? Yeah. No, I feel you. There's some people, bro, where like, you, you should be concerned. Yeah. It's like, hey, dog, you know damn well. Yeah. Or if you're doing it, like the ones that do it, like going through some shit and you're publicly, emotionally fucking sorting out mm-hmm. some s- serious trauma yeah. in front of all these people that paid yeah. and you won't let them leave and you in there. And you, <laughs> yeah, you, you know what I mean? Holding them hostage. And then, yeah, you got you on your second bottle and you yeah. think you're killing it. Because in your mind, you think, oh, because I've been that guy when I've been that drunk, like, oh, I'm fucking, like, I'm the funniest person at this place and stuff. And also, but actually, like, audience kind of, like, like to watch the party. You know, they like to watch them, like, drink and get Oh, I mean, uh, in general, yeah, in general, that's, depending on the, the comedian, I mean, for uh, for the most part, most comedians, you know, there's some that have more like a Burt Kreischer. Like yeah, some, that's there's, exactly what I was yeah, there's, about, that, there's different levels. There's like le- he is the yeah. partier, yeah, so even, like he has to do it. He has he, to. even like Joey Diaz, who like uh, he might not even be drinking or he might just be smoking weed or whatever. Mm-hmm. But like 
uh, it just comes with what is energy, cocksucker? We're yeah, like, yeah, yeah, you're just yeah. like, yeah. yeah, yeah, or like, or like Rene Vaca, he'll come out on stage, and it's like, you know, what's up, Portland, or whatever the name of the city, yeah. Los Angeles, yeah, yeah, yeah. and all the people are already like, ah, like Sparta, just that gets them all hyped up, just like, energy, ah. you know, <laughs> yeah, just that some people got that that type of crowd where yeah. they want to turn up, you know, yeah, it all, it all depends like how you build your audience, like if they know you as that person, you yeah. can't turn it off, that's what they expect. So it's a very dangerous road to go down. Like if you're asked to be like the character, like the, your what, how you represent yourself or your show, then like you got to do that. But you got to be careful. Time. You got to be careful, dog. Look, if you got a whole bunch of diabetes and a whole bunch of stuff going yeah, on, yeah. hey, dog, like come on, man, you scaring people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> nah, for sure. They're they're concerned. Like oh, yeah, they, they always like, think hey, like dog. oh, the last time you're in town, like oh, that's probably the last time I'm gonna see that. Or they guy. just yeah, like if you got other health health issues, they just looking at you drink and they're thinking like, man, this boy's pancreas working yeah extra hard right now. Yeah, to. yeah, for sure, man. Uh, <laughs> so, dude, I, I I wanted to ask you this because like you come up with like a lot of a lot of characters. You have like the the Theo uh, Theo Theo Huntino, the Theo Huntino. Huntino. Yeah. Uh, so he's doing he's doing a guest spot on the show yeah, this weekend too, spot. Yeah, and all yeah. that stuff. How many characters do you go through before you actually decide to go public with them? Like, how do you work? How do you work that out? Uh, we don't honestly, bro. We don't really think about it. Too, really? Too much. Nah, we don't really think about it. Okay. Too much. Nah, I mean, I mean. You know, having Theo Hoover join us on tour, the, yeah, that was like strategic, and like that part was kind of planned out. Okay. Yeah, for sure. But it, it's like for different reasons and for different purposes. Um, for one, you got to bring people something new. You know, you got to bring a whole bunch of fresh material, new perspective, new topics. Uh, you got to talk about everything that's relevant and breaking news as well. Mm -hmm. And we don't want to hear the same old shit you had last year. And if you got a character, bring that motherfucker out too. You know what I mean? Pack him some clothes. Yeah. Go to the back. Change. You know what I mean? Yeah. Where's he at? Why he ain't at the meet and greet? It's like, <laughs> it's like, but at the way. <laughs> but so that's interesting. So like you, you create these characters and it helps you. It kind of like inspires you to start writing a little bit different. You're writing for this character. Well, he's more. able to say stuff. I can't. Okay. For sure. Okay. I like that. Yeah. I like that. Uh, how long you been doing this the, the, that character? How long has this character been oh, been around? A long time, I think a long time. I think really, um, it was like around the first time. I mean, early in my stand, kind of early ish in my stand up career. Yeah. So it might have been about seven years ago. Mm -hmm. And um, and uh, when it, I can't remember what year we did the project for Netflix, but uh, he was included in that. Okay. But like next year, I plan on having like a more fleshed out set for him you know what i'm saying okay so that i mean i don't know how i'm allowed to split up my time contractually for these comedy clubs mm -hmm. but if you know what i'm saying like for example if he did 30 minutes and i did 30 minutes would that still count as my hour or yeah. it's like technically we it can't just be 30 minutes of you as a headliner you know what i mean i okay. don't know how that part is gonna work okay you haven't ran to that yet i haven't really like looked into it but i'll i'll, I'll get the answer okay you know? but yeah you know because i see I, I i imagine i i i've never done the tiktok or created a character i kind of okay. like i lack the uh like i'm too i'm afraid of the rejection of it like I'm, I'm gonna work on this thing i'm gonna put it out there and like no it's gonna go nowhere I mean, yeah. and I think failing that effort is kind of more embarrassing than actually putting the effort and just seeing how it how it goes. Uh, so I I already imagine like you got all these different characters, you got all these different ideas, all these different things that you try out or you think about doing, but you're just like, nah, I created it and then I ran with it. That's the I, I, thing. Yeah, honestly, it's it's usually um, a f what's the word I'm looking for out of necessity, like okay. a function of, for example, Juan. Uh, who was um, he still helps me with social media but like where Juan was basically like alright bro if if I'm gonna kind of like start helping you and backing you up with this and kind of like program director uh, like hey we're not gonna do these rants of where you just felt like posting this thing you know what I mean it's like yeah. it's more, a little bit more structured so for example he, at one point he was like alright I've been digging through your social media stuff and I saw you do some characters and I saw one of them in particular that I think we could utilize for two things. Number one, take some of the heat off me that I might have had at the time, a political controversy, right? Okay. To where um, we're able to utilize uh, characters and basically make, create stuff so people could be like, 
motherfucker's still funny, dog. Mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm. You, I don't. We don't gotta argue about some Congress stuff exactly. or some headline that we saw exactly. or some shit you saw on the View, or whatever, whatever. It's more like. Well, the guy's still funny, whatever. Eh, I, I still don't like the motherfucker, but yeah, I saw it. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. And then, so that was one thing, which is take some of the heat off you and be able to pivot and find an angle, which is a back boxing thing and a jujitsu thing. You got to have angles on everything. So let's boom, let's pivot a little bit. Let's lean into this mm-hmm. and let's hit them with that so we could cleanse out their palate of however you triggered them when you were in charge of your social media. Yeah. Right? Like, look at this. When they saw something they didn't like, they saw something they disagreed with. Yeah, or I might have just, I was just doing it my way. But that's, so that was one reason. Number two, another reason Juan uh, suggested, hey, let's really explore this character is, was because in order to be efficient in, in making uh, content, it was one of those devices where he, he saw all right, if I sit you down and I produce you and I direct you and we light it and, you know, I might punch up or give you some angles or Mm -hmm. a skeleton, um, like ask Theo Hoover, all right, we got 10 questions. What is a Sancho to do if your main client, whatever, right? Mm -hmm. So there was an efficient way to be like, all right, man, how much time we got? Man, I got to pick up the kids at three after that, gymnastics, and I'm taking them to ballet. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, well, let's knock out as many of these as we can. Mm -hmm. So that was a big reason as to like, he was smart enough to be like, oh, well, let's let's use these characters so that we can knock out a whole bunch of shit. Yeah. I mean, it worked because there's a lot of people come to the shows because of, because of Hoover. Yeah. Where well, they're like, dude, one lady at one of the shows, she made a shirt that said VIP Clienta. Uh, one dude brought like a, a white, actual white belt that he ordered, talking about he's a Sancho white belt. Can you sign it? Yeah. Like people making shirts. Making or like, their own merch, man. Yeah, That's be- great. Yeah, because like, like, even though we have merch too, but you know, maybe they couldn't get it on time. I think yeah. the, the lady, she was like, I ordered it. I thought it was going to be here before the show. And I was like, oh, I should have brought it in my bag, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, um, that's pretty wild, man. People yeah. making boot like you were at that certain level that people are making their own bootleg merch because they they want to wear it to your show. Off some new to- shit we just made. Yeah, to yeah, me, yeah. that's the hardest part about it, which is yeah. like, like it's cool when people know your stuff from twenty years ago or fifteen years ago or people that man I've been following you since oh eight or I've been following you since twenty twelve. Yeah. But bro, when you dropped that Canelo skit, uh, what year was it when you did the Dragon Ball Z, the Toy Story thing, or or when you did whatever voiceover for this or the Canelo that or whatever it may be? The cool thing is, even as of late, is still new people saying like. I don't know nothing about you, bro. I ain't never heard of you, but all my buddies that play golf with me, we text each other all the Sancho stuff, and yeah. and we got a group name for the group chat, and it's Ninja Chile Society, and, <laughs> and look, and this is the type of stuff we share the videos. So it's like tapping in. Yeah. That's that's such a smart way to to get out there, man. Like, like the word just gets out on its own. You just create it, you let it go, and like people like share it and all this stuff. They don't know you. They haven't seen you, but they just know about you, and now they're gonna come check out our show. And now they're like, "Well, I heard you used to do music, or, 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 <laughs> yeah, or, yeah, yeah. or even like the jujitsu community. Like somehow, some way, either I'll make references, either Juve will make references in the in the skit mm-hmm. to where somehow that catches the ear of some of the jujitsu people, or just just through the community where I might post a picture of me at the at the class or the gym or whatever, and then other people were tapping in. Hey, bro, I didn't know you you rode, man. Hey, man, when you in Oakland, hit us up. Hey, bro, next time yeah. you in Atlanta, bro, you gotta come kick it with us. You know, San Antonio, man, you know, pull up Corpus Christi, people tapping in, and then I get some good game like that because not only are you learning from the people at your at your home gym, but like even while you're out on the road, somebody mm-hmm. might be like hey, man, let's do a private lesson, or hey, come to our gym, just join our class, or do a drop-in, or catch one of the lunchtime, you know, whatever type of thing. So that's always cool. Cool, man. So you're doing this, uh, the last leg of the tour, Mm -hmm. wrapping up uh, 2024. Mm -hmm. You've done Netflix, you've done HBO Max. What's what's, what's next? What do you got coming up next? Man, we have some ideas. We got some ideas that we want to execute for next year like a uh, like a comedy festival um 
I got to listen to my phone. I should just read it to you, you know, read to them. Because they're, they're, like, really good, like a documentary. Yeah. Um, let me just find that real quick. Uh, one moment, one moment. All right. Let me see. Um... So some of the things we want to accomplish for 2025, let me see. Are you one of those, uh, what do you call it, the, the wish board or the, what do you call A vision board. A vision board. You're a vision I, boarder? I, I, I've had one, I've had one in the past and they really help and it's cool when the shit actually starts to come together yeah. where it might, like say you have a vision board made, right? Like you print it out or however you do it, people cut out stuff and, um, and it might be like a whole year goes by and it's like, man, we still ain't doing that and we still ain't got that. Yeah. But, but then maybe like a year and a half later, like some of the little pieces start to slowly come together. All right, I found it real quick. All right. Um, like perhaps film another special and then just figure out like either we're going to just make clips or shop it around, do like a 30 minute thing. I don't know. We'll see. Um, let me see. Uh, maybe do some like a tour with other Latino comedians. Like organize like a nationwide tour. Take a whole a diverse package lineup. deal on tour. Say it again. Take a whole package deal on tour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, in a perfect world. Yeah. Um, more of these uh, like music comedy hybrid shows. Mm -hmm. Like maybe for like Chingo de Mayo, like May, you know, May fourth, May fifth type time of the year, we could do another like, you know, you see like a band, you know, some comedians like at a brewery type of thing. Mm -hmm. um, obviously merch things like that but yeah man comedy festival special things of that nature you know now when you vision board I want to go back to that yeah, you, yeah, is yeah. It a, do you actually put out a board do you cut out things are you making a pie graph a chart I'll what's, you, what's your how vision I did board it. look like <clears throat> how I did it bro is um, I just like tried to because at least for me I don't know how other people's lives are but like sometimes you know either it's so hectic mm -hmm. and there's so much hustle and bustle and you trying to get this in order but these ducks aren't in a row but mm -hmm. but you know you really want this and you know you don't let this dream go because now you got this and this is good too you know what i mean so you're just kind of like you have options and obstacles and yeah <laughs> you're just like what do i want where mm -hmm. do i go what's the goal and and so so what i did is first i had to just kind of like uh just kind of like meditate and just think all right bro what's what really is gonna make you happy what do you want to put your energy towards what are you trying to get better at like make it like really carve it out and make it part of your life mm -hmm. you know what i mean and i'm like picturing it picturing it so I, what i basically came up with was kind of like i picture like um i think it was like like a badass hill country type of vibe with a whole bunch of guns right <laughs> yeah that was like the top coordinate uh quadrants it's uh -huh. like it's like whole bunch of guns and you like so to me that just represents like hey bro um make sure you're good in that department because you, you're the you know like get good with your shit like uh -huh. man up basically yeah, yeah, man yeah. up get tactical and that way you you know worst case you're just good at that you know that shit you got some shit you know what to do with it mm -hmm. you know what i mean mm -hmm. just to protect or whatever and then i think i also had put um uh might have been something like jujitsu related like like you know church like the bible it was kind of like an early morning picture that i found so i did like a almost like a google image search right okay. and then i printed them and cut them out so it might have been like a, a podcast thing you know those kind of things you know some of that stuff might have fell through the wayside but it's more of like you, you know your spiritual stuff something for you like something for your family like that type of vibe for me it wasn't really like material things okay. because at all at all so like like for example um the bible like just uh, kind of like seeking more of that type of substance in my life right that doesn't cost you anything but time. Like, mm -hmm. do your research. Go ask questions. Listen to podcasts. Get on YouTube. Open up. Like, where do I begin? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Somebody help break this down to me. So that don't cost money, but it's you could be richly blessed. You know, mm -hmm. jujitsu, same thing. I mean, yeah, the class costs money, and you know, you need a new gi or rash guard, whatever. But, but for the most part, that's like a. Uh, valuable life lessons and just challenging yourself and just um like just from a man's perspective like 
you know, you, you're literally getting exhausted and somebody might end up on top of you. And if this was really going down, mm -hmm. you have no more gas left in the tank and they're on top of you. So pretty much they could probably just. <laughs> yeah, they got you. Yeah. So that that little fact yeah. in the back of your mind, like, hey, bro, good thing this wasn't real and it's padded. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're on mats. Like, just keep that in mind next time you're on a treadmill and you feel like or you're on the little thing on the bike or you're at the gym. Just keep that in mind that you need to be strong mm -hmm. in case motherfucker won't kill you. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Just like just that you kind need of that thing. endurance to last it's a little just, longer than them. Your little mind games, bro. Like <laughs> yeah. ain't nobody gonna kill you, Chico. Like like what are you trying to do? Like who's you don't your, got it like that. Yeah, who, who's bullying you? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah. It's all online. They don't. They won't say it to your face. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, all yeah. that stuff. It ain't gonna shit. get to that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So drop a location then. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude. Uh, do you get a lot of that? Like, get a lot of trolls online, or do you? I, do I you probably blocked. Focus on that I probably blocked a lot of them. But yeah, you'll get some. Yeah, you'll get some. Yeah. Like you, you post a new song, and they be like, they put the trash can emoji on your really? shit. Yeah, but you know what? You gotta have thick skin, bro. Yeah. And you got to know that people are going to hate on it re regardless, you know, As, yeah. out of jealousy. Maybe they think it's fire, or but they're going to say, like, ah, it's garbage. Or it's, like, or it's really their opinion. You know, it's subjective. Maybe yeah. they didn't even listen to the whole song. Yeah. <laughs> I think people just go on there just like they don't they don't read. They don't look. They don't investigate. They just want to, like, troll. And they just get off on that. It's so wild how that's what their life yeah. is. And then my dumb ass. I'll feed, I'll feed the trolls. Like, really? I'll, I'll, sometimes I got time. Sometimes I'll go back and forth. Yeah. Bitch, pull up. My yeah. tour schedule, uh, public, ho. You yeah, know yeah, I mean? yeah. You ain't said shit since you put a location, until you put a location. P bitch, put an address on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Say it again. And they're like, nah, it's JK, bro. I didn't mean that. I was just, <laughs> and then, I'm a big fan. And then, Juan, and then Juan is like, hey, bro, you just got another strike on your Facebook. You know oh, I mean? really? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> no, if I, if, if I do that. Man, they're so sensitive to that stuff. I, I remember I put a, a, a put a thing together to promote a, a podcast episode. And somebody had talked about the peach emoji, the peach emoji, because oh, they, okay. they were flirting. And I put the peach emoji, and they said that I put a uh, put a nudity picture up there, because I guess I I made it bigger a little bit. I made the peach bigger a little bit, and they're like made it juicier. Yeah, no, <laughs> ah, the I, juicy peach, <laughs> the juicy peach. I, I just like you know, I grew it a He's little like, bit. He's like I lowered the opacity, and I, I I did like a little fish eye on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then yeah. I put a uh, kind of zoomed in, zoomed <laughs> out effect. I, I put a gloss on it. Yeah, and made Photoshop. it made it pop a little <laughs> bit. It's animated. Uh, so I had to take it down, and then I put like a, a sensor bar where the peach creases. Where it would look uh, like an ass, because they thought it was an ass. They thought like yeah, I was putting uh, like bare butt up there. It, like you oh. tricked the AI. Yeah, dude. I was like, you didn't even look at this. Like, why are you trolling me? But I, that was the only time I got a strike, man. I, I'm a pretty good. I'm a pretty good boy. I've never been even been to Facebook jail. Uh, Facebook jail. Yeah, dude. I yeah, free my dog. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, so that's cool. I gotta try vision boarding. I gotta try that stuff. I was like. I got I got so many things I gotta need to do and try out. I just oh, never yeah. like follow through. I need oh, to follow dude. through. More. If you look That's at, what I need to put on my vision board, follow through. Dude. I mean, if you look at my to do list, bro, and reminders in my phone, like yeah. as far back as I could scroll, damn near, they're not completed at all. Like yeah. I'm I'm just like going back to the beginning and it might just be like Hey, that uh, that little piece of wood on the side of the house, like you need to borrow a truck. I don't have a pickup truck. You know what I mean? It's like you need to get a hold of a pickup truck. And, yeah. And you know what I mean? It's yeah, like, yeah, man, yeah. I just okay. Well, at some point, but right now I gotta go f finish this song or yeah, yeah. or get start get packing. I'll, for I'll a get trip. to that later. It's still on the list. I didn't erase yeah. it from the list. It's still there. Yeah. I'll get to it eventually, dude. Uh, then you go to therapy. Nah. You don't go to therapy? Mm -hmm. I just had therapy today, so I like to ask people that. Uh, How you like it? You like it? I like it. I think it's next. Oh, I only go once a month now because like that's all I really could afford. Uh -huh. And uh, really, it's just like, he's just a homie. You know, it's just like hanging out with the homie for an hour and oh, stuff. Word. and Just okay. let stuff get off. I mean, I I, I can like, hang out with your friends and stuff, but like the scheduling thing, the whole schedule thing uh -huh. with the therapist is like, well, if you're paying it, I'll be here. So if you're paying yeah. for it, like, so. Uh, yeah, I'm curious. I'm curious how that is. But I, well, I bring that up because like uh -huh. you, you stay pretty busy. Do you think that's a good balancing? Like, is, is that for your for your mental health reasons? Staying busy for Staying mental health reasons. Yeah. Um. Well, see, here's the thing. Uh, no, it's not. No, okay, no, it's not. But but the way I deal with shit is sometimes I, sometimes I just need like a little bit of violence. Uh, okay. And, and I'm not saying that going to jujitsu class allows me to be violent, but I do. 
it, it helps with my ego or, or just that angst or that energy. It's like, we're going to tire you out. You know how like kids, you know, it's like, man, they need, we need to tire them out. Yeah. So that's part of it to where I, I just leave. And, and this is jujitsu. I'm talking about like I'll leave uh, feeling like, man, I'm glad I came here. They taught me some new shit. I started getting it. It was pretty cool. It's, mm -hmm. It was a fun move. We were learning uh, at the end. It was cool how like it was even harder at the end because we had to do some other shit and then i was really tired but like whew, boy it's almost like a runner's high yeah where you're just getting endorphins and and you feel good about yourself and you broke a sweat and then there's a community thing where it's like hey man good work today bro yeah, you know yeah, what i mean yeah, yeah. hey man hey good work today man let's take a selfie real quick you know what i mean whew, whatever and everybody everybody goes through stuff yeah and People don't talk about it, you know, except you, man. You go, you know what I mean? You, you pay I, mean, somebody, I, I pay somebody to, to, to listen to hey, it. Hey, shit, man. you want to pay me? We're going to parking lot right now. <laughs> what's, so, what's so funny, dude? We'll get, we'll get back to that. Yeah, 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 I, yeah. I always think about this because, like, cause like I said, like, he's like a homie of mine now, you know, like, but like when he, during our hour, it's an hour plus, whatever. But he'll start talking about his own stuff. Oh, and I'm just like, I hey, wish bro, we had like a, a timer, a chest yeah. timer. It was funny. like, all right, no, you can talk, you can talk, but yeah, like, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll, take it off my bill. Yeah, yeah we, you ain't, you ain't timing this though. It's like you don't. We, 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 you start yeah. giving him advice with his trauma and shit. No, nah, but he's always like trying to put like, well, in, in my marriage, blah blah blah. Oh, and even. so he, it, it all comes back to like his main message. But I just feel like yeah, I feel like you needed to get that yeah, off your chest yeah, more yeah, than yeah, I yeah. did. You know, because sometimes my wife, boy, I swear. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, but no, because like, I mentioned the whole business thing, like because like you, you're busy. so busy. Because I like, I feel better about myself when I'm the busiest. When I'm working. the busiest, you know. Yeah. Like this month is a very slow month, you know, because well, I'm going to Vegas this weekend. So I was like, I didn't plan out anything else, or bookings and all that stuff. But I like up until like this month, I was busy, feeling good. I had places to go and all this stuff. And then, like, October yeah. hits. I was like, man, I don't have anything on the calendar. Yeah. You, you better like, start filling in, like, your yeah, time. To yeah. Figuring out. Uh, oh, yeah. In that case, yeah. No, no. Definitely. The reason I couldn't just give you a, a flat yes, like, like staying busy is definitely helps. Yes. But also, sometimes... I'll get a little overwhelmed on some shit where like your plates start feeling full it's and too much. stuff starts falling through the cracks. And when it's literally like, when you're literally like, bro, I don't have five minutes to get on the phone with you. Yeah. You know when they're like, hey man, when you get five minutes, yeah. because we we weren't able to meet, you couldn't Zoom, you didn't come come to my office. Like, yeah. I thought you needed help with this thing. And it's like, just give me five minutes. It's like, bro, I'm literally like, Telling my kid bye, Trump, my wife's telling me something. I'm trying to load the merge, like I gotta hit the road or whatever, like, and uh, so that's when you're just kind of like, who doesn't have time yeah. for five minutes, bro? You know, it's yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't sign up for this part. Nah, man. Or, or like, for example, I might do some military uh, shows next year okay. where I'm gonna have to be. Hopefully, World War Three don't pop off. Uh, please, <laughs> please, Lord Jesus, <laughs> it's gonna be your last uh, military tour, sir. You, yeah. We dropping you off over here, but yeah. no, but like, I'm already trying to prepare myself mentally, where, where it's kind of like, bro, just psych yourself out so you don't get so restless, like on a plane, f on the other side of the globe, mm -hmm. away from your family, mm -hmm. like. Prepare yourself mentally so that you can go into it with a real good attitude and not get in your head because you just start feeling like, oh, my God, we got to get on this other plane. I didn't know this military base. I didn't know Guam was that far from yeah. wherever. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. oh, shit. And then the date, your, your, your stomach is still on Texas time. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. You're, li you're, you're asleep. And I'm just preparing myself. No, nah, not man. complain. No, nah. <laughs> yeah. you're practicing the complaining I'm now, advanced, so I don't yeah. do it then. Yeah, you know, yeah, I'm gonna get it out now. Because like, yeah. yeah, you don't want to complain in the moment. Yeah. You want to like, yeah, yeah prepare. <laughs> let me let me complain like beforehand, and, <laughs> yeah. so it's not as bad. Like <laughs> that's why I don't complain around new. Get people. yourself all worked up yeah. over nothing. <laughs> like, it's yeah. not that bad. <laughs> but yeah. uh, nah, man, no, nah, yeah. So staying busy helps with the mental health yeah. for sure. Yeah, because because I think it's good to feel productive. Productive. You know like I remember one time, bro, we were uh, we were in LA for a month, Airbnb, and my wife had just she lined up all my Cali dates around. I think it was like the month of July, right? Okay. So I was doing like big boys neighborhood radio interview. I'm going to B Reels, uh, 
hot box car podcast. I'm going to acting class, rehearsal. I, I'm opening for Intocable. I got a I got a thing tomorrow. Like that calendar, like she lined it up yeah. like that, and then she sacrificed, and um, she was just like mainly like taking the kids to their activities. Like we're like living out there for a month, but I just remember like having everything so mapped out mm -hmm. to where you didn't really have time to get in your head or fall off track or, or lose sight of your discipline. There was like no time to waste. It's like, all right, well, you better get going because traffic, you know what I mean? You got to be there at the thing. And yeah. how far is the Ontario improv, you know? Yeah. And then that was a super cool trip because uh, it'd be like, all right, kids, don't forget next weekend we're going to be in San Diego. Like we're, we're all going down. We're doing a whole weekend. Mm -hmm. And you got, you know, you got your kids and shit backstage sometimes. Yeah. So that could be weird. <laughs> nah, <laughs> they, they're man. bad. The kids in the back. Well, I don't have any kids. So I don't have to worry about that. It's just me and the wife and her dog. Uh, but, yeah, man. Cool, dude. I want to have some questions on wrap, wrap yeah, up with. Anything sure. you want to mention before we wrap up? or No, nah, man. Promote all that stuff? No. Nah. All right, these are comedy questions. This is a comedy podcast. What's well, the comedy, oh, yeah, mental sure. health, and just yeah. lifestyle, whatever, yeah. music? Oh, real quick. Mm -hmm. You Spotify or uh, iTunes? For what? For, music? To listen to music. You Spotify oh, or everywhere. iTunes? Everywhere. iTunes, YouTube. What's your go-to? For me? Yeah. Oh, where I listen to? What do you listen to? Yeah, what do you listen to? Uh, honestly, these days, I'll hop on my wife's YouTube account because okay. she's the one that got the premium. All right. What's one thing, uh, band, album, artist, whatever, that somebody would be surprised that you're jamming right now? Surprised? Oh, man. Jamming. Oh, yeah, yeah. You a, you a Chapel Roan fan right now? Who is that? Chapel Roan. Chap You've heard. I've known Chapel Roan? Chapel Roan, I believe that's a, how you say it. I'm, you, you've no. heard, I'm pretty sure you really? heard about her. Really? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, surprised. I mean, I... I Damn, it's a hard one, man. Like what I'm jamming lately. Because people will see you as a you know hip hop head, you yeah. know salsa, Latin stuff. Yeah, but nah, I'm like, not too good at salsa. My if wife, if oh, people man. like like found out like, you listen to Cannibal Corpse, would be like, I don't think you know, get I just like heard that. of Cannibal Corpse. Really? I just heard of them. <laughs> really? I just heard of them like last week. Really? Yeah. That's that's interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How'd you how'd you how'd you uh, discover? I think I Cannibal saw Corpse? some on Twitter. I saw like like a headline, like somebody reposted something. Okay. I I can't remember what that was about, but like I like to study. Uh, uh, music from time to time so um, like I, I like Juicy J from 3-6 Mafia tweeted something about jazz and then I asked like what's a good jazz album for a beginner to like kind of explore and okay. then a lot of replies came in yeah. and it, it was it was nice and relaxing to like go find one of them and and, and kind of hear a different a different rhythm mm -hmm. or even like when my wife jammed salsa I, I used to be very like anti-salsa where I was just yeah. kind of like Man, I don't get it. You know what I mean? Like, that's not really... There's but, a time and place for salsa, But for I sure. appreciate, but because of my ears, I've tried to train my ears to, like, to understand, like, um, how different things influence. So yeah. then I start appreciating the percussion and the horns yeah. and, like, the orchestra and the syncopate, you know, all that type of stuff. No, that, that's cool, man. So, yeah. I've been on a nice trip uh, lately, dude. Like, the nice music was really good. Nice rock music. It was really good. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. like, like, uh, like grunge. Uh, everything, everything, like Seattle mostly person. grunge. Yeah. So Seattle, I'm a huge Seattle fan, and that's why I moved out there to try to do the band thing. But like, even like, even stuff like Fiona Apple in the okay. '90s. What about like Blind Melon? Blind like Melon, thing. Third Eye Blind, uh, yeah. Yeah, Jim Blossoms. Yeah. I mean, they had some Sublime. Bangers. Like Sublime. Sublime's you know? all right, yeah. you, know, you know, but, know, but like that's more sky. like yeah, that's more like. Uh, like the sky. stoner punk oh, okay. groove, and they did some reggae stuff. They were kind of like a mixture of a lot of stuff. Yeah. But like, I'll be, I'll surprise myself about like, man, I really like this song. Uh, what is that? Uh, Two Princess Spin Doctors. I mean, I've heard about the Spin Doctors, mm -hmm. known about the Spin Doctors, yeah. but then when you don't hear that song, that Two Princes, uh, in years, and then it comes on, you're like, oh, you man. fuck with uh, Smashing Pumpkins. Smashing Pumpkins, big fan of Smashing Pumpkins. Yeah. yeah. I like that stuff. Uh, but I'm always wondering, like, what what surprises uh, people have. Uh, well, like, yeah, I'll, I'll, like I was saying, just, just to reiterate, like, I'll ask, uh, I'll ask um, sometimes friends, like, from there, they'll be younger. Like, mm -hmm. my friend Rob, he's, like, young, way young. He might be, like, 10 years younger, stuff like that. And I'll be like, all right, bro, let me school you to, like, an album 
that I was coming up on or something like from my high school days. Yeah. And then show me like some shit you talking about. And then he might be like, all right, all right, okay. Well, well what genre? I might be like, okay, you got to hear this Outcast album. Just pay attention to da 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 da, right? Yeah. And then he'd be like, okay, jam out Metallica live from Mexico City and uh, let me know what you think type thing. And then yeah. I'll like take notes and try to make time. Like, all right, I'm going to listen to a couple songs in the car, yeah. a couple songs at the gym. Just to really because just to like educate and um just study it and you get inspiration from all that yeah. just textures and mix and it could be an album from years ago but it's new to you you're just discovering it now and you're just like oh man i didn't realize this this is my favorite band or this you hear is my... the influences yeah oh like for example here's a cool rabbit hole um damn, what's the name of that record label bro is is it is it chess records out of memphis I think it was called Chess. Well, it was the label that um, we saw a whole badass documentary about it too. But it was the label that had um, uh, like Otis Redding, okay, and, and I think Isaac Hayes was a part of a group. I don't know if his solo stuff, but they put out like, for example, uh, "Hold On, I'm Coming." That da 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 So, have you ever done uh, Bart Reed's uh, comic strip? No, no, no. So if you ever do Bart Reads in El Paso, uh, great comedy club, you might be in the green room, and that might be some of the warm-up music, like that type of playlist. Yeah. But I, I love it, dog. It's a different era. It's a I vibe, mean, It just man. puts people puts in a different type of yeah. yeah. That's pretty dope. Uh, yeah, man, I, I love talking about music, just uh, oh, yeah, discovering sure. people's Hell stuff. Yeah. Uh, all right, comedy. Uh, who was the first comic that you remember seeing that goes like that made you think, I, I want to do that? Oh man, I mean, as a little kid seeing Eddie Murphy mm. doing his thing, uh, being the king of the of everything, like all these movies, Saturday Night Live, mm -hmm. like late night television appearances, stand up comedian specials, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like you're just like, man, this dude's cool. You know what I mean? He had that like almost like a hip hop edge to him a little bit. Mm. Um, but was just running shit. So that had to be like the first. And then of course, like Martin Lawrence was huge impact with like his sitcom, Def Comedy Jam, yeah, stuff like that. Obviously, you'd see Chris Rock doing his thing too. But like when Cat Williams came out and like the DVDs and like everybody was quoting all that, um, you're just like, damn, yeah, that's super cool. Yeah, when Dude. people quote it like at work or at school, and you're just like, man, like that's how good that joke is. That bit is that good that people are that idea spread bringing it to like and. Trying to make it their own, like oh, I know, where, I know where you got that from. I know that's not your own yeah. personal joke. All right, uh, if you could have anybody's bit, this is pretty much like, who, what's your favorite bit that oh, you ever yeah. heard? If you could have anybody's bit as your own, like you were like, oh, I wish I wrote that. Mm -hmm. I wish I had put that on yeah. stage. But it was so impressive as one of your favorite bits of anybody, any comic. What do, you, what do you think that would be? Oh man, that's a hard question to like quote a joke, but it, just to. Just to not be like, I can't think of nothing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I love when Cat Williams breaks down um, important, heavy subjects like wartime propaganda in a very layman's terms type of way, yeah. for example. And like the, the joke I'm referring to is when he was talking about how the media was talking about, I think, some type of conflict. I think it might have been Desert Storm or some war overseas, mm -hmm. right, American involved. And then he says, like, he said, you see it on the news, you know. Today we killed 13 insurgents, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And he said, hey, you just be at home, like, motherfucker, I ain't got no insurgent friends. <laughs> like, I don't got no motherfucking insurgent <laughs> friends. And then he goes on to tell you, like, you know, tell me what the Iraqi uniform looked like. I'll wait. Yeah. I, I believe that's what he said, Iraqi. But um, he's like, I exactly. He's like, we killing motherfuckers in, in tank tops and soccer shorts. <laughs> he's like, in flip flops. He's like, we killing them. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Then, and, uh, and then he ties it all together saying he was so high, he his ki all his kids' cereal. And the kids are like, Daddy, somebody ate all the cereal. He's like, must have been one of them insurgents, baby, came in here. <laughs> like, yeah. doing what the government is doing, doing what the media is doing, like, labeling something you don't readily identify, um, blaming it on, you know what I mean? Just so that we don't know that we're, that we're, yeah. what's really, what you're really witnessing is all your tax dollars going to, like, missiles to blow up little kids and stuff. And, um, 
and you, they're just getting rich. Yeah. And, and then they're going to get paid again with hooking up all their friends with the contracts. And they're going to funnel more of your money to rebuild. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be like a billion to back. You, we're funding both sides. So, But anyway, like he made it funny yeah. to just be like, they're lying to you on the TV and they're tricking you. Yeah, and they're using just words so just so like you think you know what you're talking about. It's or you don't want to admit that you don't know exactly what they're talking about. But you're like, no, nah, I, I get it. I understand what they're saying. He basically broke down propaganda. Yeah. And, and fake, fake media, fake news. Yeah, and then people will take something that they really don't understand and they start spreading it as their own stuff. And like, it's just like, God, you don't get the whole picture. You don't read the whole thing like he did, yeah, 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 yeah. he did the one about the clone meat i don't know if you know that joke. not clone he meat would, not Anna. yeah but he basically said and it's it's funny because he's making fun of like i saw it in the article you know they they had just allowed you know making clone meat you know and he's <laughs> yeah. like he's like and you motherfuckers are gonna f uh, feed the the uh clone retarded meat to your kids <laughs> and the kids your baby can't see the abc's right abc moo he said she got a little horn out in her braids and you know he said but the hood the hood is gonna fall for it. he's like it, it grow already with garlic already you know yeah, they, yeah. they put it in and that's some Bill Gates shit. They they'll mess with some. They already cloning shit. Yeah, they already yeah, yeah. trying to feed us some bullshit. But this is like a joke from like ten years ago. No, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's pretty wild. How it still like holds up today and all this stuff. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, what's one thing that you? What's one thing that you do before you go on stage? What's one thing that you don't do before you go on stage? Any rituals? Um, any like uh, well, yeah. superstition stuff or? Yeah. Um. I mean, for the most part just try to be um what's the word i'm looking for um just in my zone you know what i mean like like uh feel like get collect your shit okay here's here's an example of like a ritual if i can if i if i don't have anything on me like alpha brain like a little supplement um uh, high, make sure I'm like electrolytes. Like I'll find a Whole Foods, bro. Like yeah. where if we have time and all that, and if I need it, you know, we might be in the middle of California somewhere and be like, all right, all right, bro. Let's uh, might be in, me and another comic. Let's pull in. You know what I'm saying, get like some to drink. Get some of these little powder packets. Fucking, you know, load up on some shit. You know, yeah, yeah. just to make sure you're whole fucking, you're hydrated and everything's tip top magoo. So, um, so that that's always nice uh, if you, when you can, right? Mm -hmm. But really, just kind of, just kind of get my mind right, go into comedian mode, like be confident, and just you know remember, uh, you know remember what I was taught, like like my boy Rick Gutierrez taught me, like mm -hmm. attitude, energy, confidence, and just you know go over my notes if there's anything new that I want to make sure I'm gonna try and work out. And besides that, man, just um, you know, sometimes we remember, you know, pray with the crew, you know, mm -hmm. maybe somebody out there stressed out, allow us to uh, relieve, you know, give somebody some hope and some laughter. Yeah. And then what not to do is get all fucked up and yeah. drunk and, you know. I know we hit on that earlier, but yeah. did you ever have a show like that where you did too much, you got too drunk? Oh, or? man. <laughs> too, too high. Too high. Oh, yeah. Well, that, Chicago, and that's, Zanies. that's what sucks is like Zanies, it, it could just sneak up on you, man. Like, oh, I, I, I've done this before. Like, oh. This is my first time. And then, like, oh. It snuck up on me. Yeah. It snuck, okay. In Chicago, you said? If I had to give you the quick story, we're in the green room. My wife is actually there for that show because she, she, she doesn't travel with me as much anymore. But um, I already kind of have this rule of like, if, don't get too, too high, too, too close to the show. I mean, yeah. If you're going to smoke, do it a little bit earlier. Yeah. Don't overdo it. But I made an exception because some of my buddies are like, bro, fuck all that other shit. You yeah, know, yeah. this, you know, it's all of the good, none of the bad. Like, <laughs> you, you got to do just one hit. You got to try it because, you know, Wiz Khalifa, want, he shouted me out on the radio about this strength. Uh, anyway, Burner wanted to buy some. I didn't even sell Burner none. And he's like, dude, I'm Burner. He's like, dude, I, you got money then. And he hyped it up so much. I'm like, I got to try it. Yeah, yeah. He hit a couple of times like, bro. You're not lying. It's like all the good, none of the bad. I'm on cloud nine. He pulls out the little cartridge on the pin. He's like, bro, but we made it cartridge too. Like the weight, there's more. 
you got to try it, dog. Like, it's so clean. No pesticides. It's just sun yeah. vibes. You know, he's like, he's like, yeah. dude, once he started talking about the mother plant, he's like, bro, when Obama got in and they went in and they raided all the fucking dispensaries and the, the grows and, and they killed all the mother plants, this the last mother plant. <laughs> mother when he plant, talked about yeah, the yeah. mother plant, he's like, bro, them seeds, the mother seeds. He's like, that's all fucking GMO. This mother plant. I said, fine. I was like, bro, you ain't lying. Cloud nine. Yeah. Wow. I'm Cloud Niner right yeah, now. This yeah, is yeah. perfect. I go on as Juve, fucking destroy. Uh the feature, she's up there killing. I'm just like having a great time. Tiny club, super pack. So I'm like, man, let me go to the green room. Just get my mind right real quick. And I saw the joint sitting there, the little little bitty baseball bat just sitting there. And I was like, I could probably just hit it one more time. Mm. And that was the, the one, one time. more time. And so by the time I go up there, now I was just on that stage in that same room, same people. But now I see the little things floating, like the lights hitting and like the echo I hear, like you're just like heightened. And it's like, wow, my mom's really dry. It's like, <laughs> I don't think I brought water up here. And then I'm like, I think my wife knows I'm high. And she knows I, I, I messed up and I broke the rule. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, uh and then I think I even said it on stage. I was like, I, I went back to the green room right now, and I, yeah, I hit it, I hit it again. <laughs> Everybody in the crowd's like, what is he talking about? Yeah. Is this a new character? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what green room? You were in the middle of a story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Finish your story. Like, nah, uh, I, I went and hit it again. That's crazy, dude. <laughs> oh, man. I was a, did you finish the set? You obviously finished the set. I mean, set. I, you... I, I, I think my wife knew, and then my friends... That, that I know they knew because yeah. when I got off, when I got off stage, first thing he says, he's like, there are some side effects. Oh, and I'm just, like, I'm just like, hey, bro, you made it sound like it was no side effects. You said effects. no bad, dog. Yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah, I had some bad earlier on stage. You see the bad? You see the bad? <laughs> nah, but I caught my groove and I actually like some, uh, some of the bits I was, I think I actually put some of those online because uh of that night yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. but it was like a little bit more in the middle and the end of the set yeah. where i was like oh I, that was a nice okay well i kind of like that take yeah so yeah let's yeah. go ahead and put that out by the time like you adjusted to what you had to do with and all this stuff settled and you know caught my breath yeah have you ever ended a set early because you, you got too fucked up or i mean i think i was probably like real amateur i remember one time pretty new in it yeah i didn't really understand i the game mm -hmm. because because I did, I did like 10, 12 years of music and then already was, you know, had a name and then kind of like caught the fast track on a lot of access to certain rooms. So I'm performing in like, uh, like Wichita, Can like Tulsa, I think it was like Wichita, Kansas or something. Yeah. And super green. And I, I wasn't like those TikTok motherfuckers. It's like motherfucker had no act, but I didn't really know the importance of like hey bro when you're scheduled like when we asked you how much time you're doing yeah. and do you need a light type thing it's because they need to know when to drop the checks and everybody can close out their tab and everything ends yeah. properly and you didn't fucking finish all the way and now the wait staff is like motherfucker like they yeah. just ordered a drink five minutes ago i'm on my way back and i gotta drop checks and and now they're sitting here and there's no more show yeah so I was like, sorry. Damn, dude. You got to learn the hard way. Yeah. That's crazy, dude. Uh, all right. Why should, why, if you somebody asks, like, they want to be a comic, they want to start out in comedy, you can say, okay, this is why you should do it, and this is why you shouldn't do it. Okay. All right. Stand-up comedy is a beautiful art form. It can help you in a lot of aspects of life. It's a fun thing. Uh, you could gain a lot from it. It's worth trying. If you put it off, you might go back to it five years later, like kind of like I did. I don't know if it was that many years. But um, if you really uh, respect the craft and you're down to put in the work to uh, understand how it's done, then it, it can be, a lot of it can be taught, in my opinion. Um, worst case, you have a really cool story to tell. You tried something, and it's going to help you in life because you're not going to be as embarrassed talking to people. Or, or it, it could you could unlock a superpower. Yeah, for sure, man. Uh, well, thanks. And why not to do? It? Yeah, why, why not? You know. <laughs> oh man, because you're taking my stage time, dude. That's why you know. No, the not. Oh man, that's a hard one. 
Uh, I mean, if you're not really uh, about that life, man, don't don't even disrespect the craft. Yeah, you can't you can't dabble. I I, I, yeah. I know there's people that that do dabble. They do just, uh, you know go out once a once a week and like you got you got to learn how to do it. You got to learn how how you what your voice is, how you want to say things, how you want people to see you, what they what you want people to think about you. Like you got to invest time to figure all that out. I don't think you could do that one night a week three times a month, you know, so you got to invest time. in it. That's what, that's why I think people shouldn't do it. If you don't have the time to do it. Uh, anything else you want to mention? No, no, that's it. Yeah. All right, man. Well, thank you for hanging out, dude. Again, the last leg of the tour, uh, at the laugh out loud comedy club this weekend, make sure you get tickets, kicking it off Thursday, October 10th through the 13th here in uh, San Antonio, Texas. And then Corpus Christi, November, November 8th through 9th. Friendsgiving in Pasadena, Texas, November 16th. Uh, Chingo Bells in Arlington, Texas, December 27th, 29th. And again, go to chingobling.com slash live for all that information, man. Thank you very much for hanging Thank out, you, dude. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, man. Uh, we'll see you next time. Peace. Peace. Peace.